the Celts, a people of warriors, druids, and intricate art, once stretched across half of Europe. From the misty hills of Ireland to the plains of Anatolia, their culture left an unmistakable mark. But behind their legendary status lies a puzzle that has baffled historians and scientists for centuries. Who exactly were the Celts? For generations, scholars debated their origins. Some insisted the Celts began in Central Europe, radiating outward from the Hallstatt and Latin cultures. Others argued their roots were in the British Isles, or perhaps even Iberia. Their identity was shrouded in myth, with no single homeland or empire to anchor them. Now, modern genetics has entered the debate. By sequencing ancient DNA from Celtic burials across Europe, scientists expected to finally settle the question. Instead, what they found shocked them. The Celts were not a single, unified bloodline. Their DNA revealed something far stranger, a tangled web of ancestries, blending Neolithic farmers, Bronze Age steppe warriors, and local populations into a cultural identity that defied simple categories. This discovery challenges everything we thought we knew about the Celts. If their DNA doesn't point to a single origin, what made them Celtic at all? Was it blood, language, or shared belief? Today, we dive deep into the mystery of Celtic DNA and reveal why scientists were not ready for what they uncovered. When we speak of the Celts, it's easy to imagine them as a single nation ruled by kings and bound by borders. But in reality, the Celts were never one kingdom, nor a single empire. Instead, they were a vast cultural network that spread across Europe, from the rugged coasts of Ireland and Britain, to France, Central Europe, Iberia, and even as far east as Turkey. The Celts shared a common language family, with dialects that linked their tribes across immense distances. They also shared a distinctive artistic style, swirling patterns, intricate metalwork, and elaborate war gear that still captures our imagination today. Their spiritual world was equally fascinating. Druids, the priests and wise men of Celtic society, oversaw rituals, sacrifices, and a belief system deeply tied to nature and the cycles of the seasons. Yet despite this shared culture, there was no Celtic nation. The Celts lived in tribes and chiefdoms, often fighting among themselves just as fiercely as they resisted outsiders. Julius Caesar, when writing of the Celts in Gaul, described them as brave, proud, but also divided, a fact that made them easier for Rome to conquer. And here lies the mystery. Without a central empire, how did the Celts manage to spread their influence so widely? Archaeologists long looked to artifacts and linguists to the Celtic tongues, but neither could fully explain their origins. This is why DNA became so crucial. Could genetics reveal whether the Celts were truly one people? or simply many tribes united under a shared identity. As it turns out, the genetic story of the Celts would prove to be far more surprising and far more mysterious than anyone imagined. To understand the Celts, we have to go back long before their name ever appeared in history. The genetic trail begins with the very first Europeans, Ice Age hunter-gatherers, who left their mark across the continent tens of thousands of years ago. Later, around 6,000 years ago, early farmers arrived from the Near East, bringing agriculture and mixing with these older populations. These layers of ancestry formed the foundation of what would later become Celtic Europe. But the true turning point came during the Bronze Age, when steppe herders from regions north of the Black Sea swept into Europe. They carried with them horses, wagons, and perhaps most importantly, Indo-European languages the distant ancestors of today's Celtic tongues. Their genetic signature is clear across Europe, and the Celts were no exception. By the time the first clearly Celtic cultures emerged, the Hallstatt culture in Austria and the Latin culture in Switzerland and France, the population was already a blend. Hunter-gatherer, farmer, and steppe ancestry mixed together, creating a people who would later be called Celts by the Greeks and Romans. Archaeologists see continuity in burial styles, weapons, and artwork, but DNA reveals an even deeper truth. The Celts were not born from a single migration or homeland. Instead, they were the product of centuries of mixing, absorbing influences from every wave of people who crossed Europe. This complicated origin challenges the old idea of a single Celtic cradle. Instead, the Celts arose as a cultural identity 
carried by diverse peoples, rooted in Europe's ancient past, but reshaped by migration and contact. Once the Celtic culture had taken shape in Central Europe, it began to spread outward with astonishing speed. By around 500 BC, Celtic tribes had pushed westward into Gaul, Iberia, and the British Isles, while others moved eastward into the Balkans and even Asia Minor, where a group known as the Galatians famously clashed with the Greeks. Their expansion was not the work of a single empire, but rather of countless tribes moving, trading, and sometimes conquering across a vast landscape. What's remarkable is how different these Celtic groups became depending on where they settled. In Iberia, DNA studies reveal that so-called Celtic tribes mixed heavily with the native Iberians, creating unique communities that were Celtic in culture, but not genetically identical to their Central European cousins. In Ireland and Britain, ancient DNA shows deep continuity with earlier Neolithic farmers and Bronze Age peoples, suggesting that rather than being completely replaced, local populations absorbed Celtic languages and traditions. This means that the Celts of Ireland were not genetically the same as the Celts of Iberia or Gaul. And yet, they all shared enough cultural markers, art, language, belief systems, to be recognized as part of the same Celtic world. This diversity shocked researchers who once expected a single, traceable Celtic bloodline. Instead, it became clear that Celtic identity was less about DNA and more about shared culture and values. The Celts were not one people in the biological sense. They were many peoples united by a cultural framework that spread further than any one tribe's genes could reach. When scientists finally began sequencing ancient Celtic burials, they thought they would find a clear genetic signature a set of markers that defined who the Celts really were. Instead, the results turned everything upside down. In Central Europe, ancient DNA from Hallstatt and Latin graves showed strong connections to Bronze Age steppe ancestry, but also revealed heavy mixing with local Neolithic farmer lineages. In Iberia, so-called Celts turned out to be genetically closer to native Iberians than to their cousins in Gaul. And in the British Isles, DNA revealed something even stranger. Much of the genetic heritage there stretched back thousands of years before the Celtic Age, suggesting that Celtic culture had been adopted by existing populations rather than brought in by a new people. This means that being Celtic was not about carrying a single genetic signature. Instead, it was a cultural identity that could be taken on by many different groups. A tribe in Ireland, a warrior band in Gaul, and a community in Iberia might look different in their DNA, but they still saw themselves and were seen by others as Celts. For scientists, this was a revelation. The Celts were not a race, nor a single genetic lineage. They were a cultural phenomenon, one that spread across Europe in ways that defied the boundaries of bloodlines. And that's why their DNA still puzzles researchers today. For centuries, the Celts have been wrapped in myths. Nationalists in Ireland, Scotland, France, and elsewhere often imagined the Celts as a pure ancestral race, a single bloodline passed down unchanged from ancient times. The romantic image of noble warriors, druids, and timeless traditions has been powerful, but DNA tells a different story. The reality is that the Celts were never a single, unified people. They were a mosaic, tribes with different ancestries, mixing with local populations wherever they settled. What held them together was not genetics, but culture, shared language roots, art, belief systems, and values. This doesn't make the Celtic legacy less impressive. It makes it more extraordinary. The Celts remind us that identity isn't only about blood, but about ideas, traditions, and connections that can outlast even the greatest empires. The story of the Celts is not just ancient history. It has real meaning for us today. In a world where people often ask who are we or where do we come from, the Celtic DNA mystery offers an important lesson. Identity is never simple. Modern nations often trace their pride back to the Celts, imagining them as a pure ancestral bloodline. But genetics shows us that the Celts were not defined by purity, but by diversity. They were farmers and warriors, locals and migrants, steppe nomads and native Europeans all blended together under a cultural umbrella that gave them unity without uniformity. This matters today because it reminds us that culture can be stronger than blood.
shared traditions, languages, and beliefs can unite people across different genetic backgrounds. In a time when questions of identity and belonging are more important than ever, the Celts show us that complexity is not a weakness. It is the foundation of resilience. By understanding the true origins of the Celts, we see that our own identities are also layered, mixed, and constantly evolving. And maybe that is the real strength of humanity. The mystery of Celtic DNA shows us that history is rarely straightforward. The Celts were not one bloodline, but a living mosaic of peoples bound together by culture, tradition, and ideas that still echo in Europe today. Their story reminds us that our past is complex, and our identities are built from countless threads of history. So now we ask you, which part of the Celtic story surprised you most? The diversity of their DNA, or the power of their culture to unite so many peoples? Share your thoughts in the comments below.